Luang Prabang is the most popular tourist destination in Laos and has also become one of my favorite cities in Southeast Asia. In this video, we will introduce you to this beautiful and laid-back little town. And in addition, show you a lot of interesting things you can do in and around the city. At the end of the video, I will also give you a review of the hotel I stayed in during my trip. So where is Luang Prabang? Well, it's located in the northern part of Laos, right on the bank of the Mekong River. And as you can see in this map, the airport is very close to the city center. So arriving here by plane is very convenient. Most tourists probably arrive on the route from Bangkok, where for example Air Asia has several reasonably priced flights here every day. Tourists from most countries will need a visa to enter Laos. And the easiest way is to get an e-visa online for about 50 US dollars. You can of course also get a visa on arrival. To get from the airport to the city center, you can just catch a taxi from outside the terminal building. Or like me, just arrange with the hotel to pick you up. No matter what you choose, the airport taxi is very cheap, at around 10 US dollars to the city center. So where exactly is the city center in Luang Prabang? Well, it's located in the so-called historic district, which is kind of a peninsula with the Mekong River on one side and the Nam Khan River on the other. Here you will find one quite long main street where most of the action takes place in the evening. And the bottom part of this street turns into the famous night market after sunset. So let's first have a look at this main street in Luang Prabang. At the upper end it's very quiet and beautiful. It has several hotels, some very atmospheric restaurants, a couple of cafes and a bakery. As you get closer to the night market, there are more shops. Here you can of course get all your tourist souvenirs, but they also have quite a good selection of high quality textiles, and most of them are made in the area. Just before you reach the night market, there's a more lively section with many restaurants. Here they have a good selection of both western food and more traditional local food then you get to the famous night market. But before we check out the night market, let's go for a drive about 40 to 50 minutes outside the city along the Nam Khan River. Here you will find the Mandalao Elephant Conservation Center. And I had booked a half day trek with the elephants. So Mandalao is an ethical elephant camp with elephants that have spent the majority of their lives working in logging camps and low welfare tourist attractions before being rescued and brought to this place. The center is beautifully located right on the bank of the Nam Khan River. And for the half day trek, I paid 100 US dollars, including hotel pickup and lunch after the trek. So the day at Mandalao starts out with an introduction by a Thai expert with over 30 years experience with elephants. I started working in Thailand in 1986 to find the... After the introduction, you can change into some very robust footwear which is absolutely necessary if it's wet, but this day though it was very dry, so my ordinary hiking shoes were more than enough. So the elephants themselves are actually on the other side of the river. So a short 5 minute boat trip across the Nam Khan River took us to the other side to meet them. <laughs> Alright, so uh, for the safety, when we interact with the elephant, you can interact only in the front. You can touch them in the trunk, like this, like this. And after the short safety briefing, it was ready for us to try out some feeding. And this was certainly a very interesting and new experience for me. She will always chain up. Yeah, I'm chained. Means every time when. And throughout the day, there were plenty of opportunities for great photo ops. After the feeding, it was ready for our trek with the elephants. And throughout this trek, we had really close contact with these amazing animals. 
The guides gave us a lot of interesting information about how these animals live in the wild. And you can really tell that they have a lot of knowledge and are really passionate about what they do. Oh, he can eat the whole thing? Yeah, they, eat, they, they try to peel it. Mm -hmm. Oh, he's doing crush? Yeah, <laughs> eat the, the oh soft man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this way. So after a couple of very interesting hours, it was time for the elephants to walk on. And for those of us who had booked a half day trek, to walk back. We walked through Mandalao's organic farm, before we had a nice lunch back at the center. They also have a small souvenir shop here. And fun fact, most of it is made of elephant poo. But not everything. So let's get back to the city center and the night market. This famous market comes to life every night after sunset. They have a large selection of the typical tourist things that you will expect to find in such a market. Some of it is quite okay and locally made, and the prices are very reasonable. You can haggle, but uh, the prices are so low, so you don't really have to. Right next to the night market, there's a large food court, with plenty of seating. This place is perfect if you want to sample some of the local cuisine, or if you like street food. It's also great if you're on a budget, as you can get a dinner here for as low as two dollars. If you want more of a romantic setting, there are several restaurants down by the Mekong River. Here you can have dinner and watch that perfect sunset. There are of course many things to do in the city center during daytime as well. But before we look at those, let's take another 40 minute trip outside the city center. This time to probably the most popular tourist destination in Luang Prabang. It is of course the Kuangxi waterfall. For this trip, I rented this car with the driver. For 50 US dollars, he would take me to Kuangxi waterfall and back again. But the good thing is that we could stop at as many places as I wanted as long as it was on the same road. And there are many things to discover on this route, which we will show you of course. First stop was the welcome center at Kuangxi. Here you can buy a ticket, which is very cheap. Then, you are driven in these environmentally friendly electric cars up to the entry area. In this area you can buy some souvenirs, or get your breakfast, lunch or dinner depending on when you arrive at Kuangxi, and if you have the stomach for it. Oh. To get to the actual Kuangxi waterfall itself, you have to follow a walking trail. And the first stop along this trail is actually a bear sanctuary. This sanctuary serves as a haven for rescued bears, offering them a safe and natural environment to thrive. Through educational displays, you can here learn about the challenges faced by bears in the region and the steps taken to protect and rehabilitate them. They also sell some souvenirs here, so do pick up a t-shirt as it is for a very good cause. Wandering further along this trail, you will pass several very picturesque and beautiful ponds, made by tiers of limestone, before you get to the main swimming area. This place can be very busy during daytime, but if you come here early in the morning or late in the afternoon, it can also be almost empty. Just up from the swimming area, you will get to the main attraction, which is of course the main Kuangxi waterfall. This place is absolutely gorgeous. On the left side here, there is a path leading to the top of the waterfall. But this is only possible to climb if it's very dry. If it has been raining recently, it's just too slippery and dangerous. 
If you do manage to get to the top though, you're rewarded with a great view, and also a large, very atmospheric pond, where I met these locals having a great time. So after Kuangxi, there is actually one more attraction between the entrance point and the welcome center. So you have to tell the driver of the electric car to let you off here. And at the butterfly park, I was welcomed by these guys. It was obvious that they hadn't seen a lot of people since the end of the pandemic. So this park is run by a very nice Dutch couple. So the guidebook? And they will gladly tell you everything you need to know before entering the park. Little stories about butterflies. Uh, with the sheet, the top 10 of butterflies. It costs five dollars to enter the park, and it's built like a kind of a nature trail, where at each section you can read in the guidebook about how the butterflies live. The main attraction, though, is this big enclosure where you can find these beautiful small insects. And as soon as you enter, you can start searching for them. Another really cool thing in the butterfly park is their natural fish spa. I had tried this before in those small aquariums, but I never tried it in a natural pond, so of course I had to check it out. So it took a little time before they got the bait, but then they started nibbing away. Really refreshing. So just outside the Kuangxi Welcome Center you will find the buffalo farm. Or the Laos Buffalo Dairy, which is the official name. Here you can get a 45 minute guided tour for 8 US dollars. They can keep more meat. This farm is actually a place where they invite local farmers to learn about how to better run their farms. And especially how to breed pigs and how to take care of buffaloes. And if you want to learn how to make a pig go to sleep, this is how you do it. Main attraction though are of course the buffaloes. And you also have the chance to milk one of them, something I had never done of course, so I had to give it a go. How to milking demonstration. Okay, you can Not a great start for me, no. But then suddenly yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, that's one. <laughs> oh, this. Uh, oh, it's okay. I it's just. Uh, <laughs> I have milked the buffalo. Is a fat? Is the yes. They like to have strawberry. At the end of the tour, you also had the chance to try out their buffalo milk ice cream. Just before returning to Luang Prabang, we stopped at the Ok Pop Tok Living Craft Center. This center is located in a beautiful garden right on the bank of the Mekong River. It is created and run by women and its mission is as follows. To elevate the profile of Lao textiles and artisans, to increase economic opportunities for artisans and facilitate creative and educational collaboration in Laos and worldwide. You can walk around here for free to see how they make their stuff. And of course they have a large shop where you can pick up some of their textiles. The prices here are not the lowest, but you get good quality and you support a good cause. If you do decide to come here, you should definitely plan your lunch here as well, as they have a very nice restaurant overlooking the Mekong River. And if you're one of those digital nomads, why don't bring your laptop and make it the office for the day? So if you're not too tired by now, there is one more possible stop at the Kuangxi route. 
Right across the street from the Living Crowd Center is the Pussy Market. This local market doesn't really add a lot to these kinds of markets if you have seen them around Southeast Asia. But if you want some dirt cheap clothes or a pair of sandals, you can stop by for 5 minutes. Back in the city center, one of the most popular attractions in Luang Prabang is the almsgiving ceremony. So in the historic district there are many temples. And if you're interested in Buddhist culture, you can easily spend a few hours or half a day exploring them. Wat Sieng Tong is the most important temple in Luang Prabang. And it also serves as the ending point of the alms ceremony. As for the ritual itself, it is known as the Tak Bat ceremony and it takes place in Luang Prabang every morning before sunrise. The monks walk in a single fire line, barefoot, carrying their alms poles to collect food offerings from the local people and sometimes also from tourists. As this is a sacred Buddhist tradition, it is of course important to respect the ceremony by dressing appropriately and observing the proper etiquette when participating or observing the ceremony. Another Buddhist attraction right in the center of the city is Pusi Hill. To reach the summit of this hill, you have to climb a steep staircase of around 300 steps. And on your way up, you will see a lot of interesting Buddhist statues. At the summit, you will find a large golden stupa. As well as several Buddhist shrines. At the top you also have a viewing platform that provides 360 degree views of the city and the surrounding landscape. Right across from Pusi Hill you will find the National Museum. The museum is housed in the former royal palace in a large beautiful park. It showcases many artifacts and treasures from the country's rich past and is definitely a must-visit destination for history enthusiasts and those seeking a deeper understanding of Laos' rich heritage. Unfortunately though, it was not allowed to film inside the museum. So, let's go for another half-day excursion a little outside of the city center. This time to the Living Land Company. The Living Land Company is actually a rice farm, specializing in teaching people the whole process of growing rice. And I had signed up for the half-day rice experience. For this I paid 35 US dollars including hotel pickup. And if you add another 10 dollars you can get lunch as well. The day takes you through all the steps of making rice. From getting dirty out in the fields to harvesting on dry land. One highlight is the possibility of getting really dirty with a pink buffalo Rudolph. Throughout the day we had a really great teacher who was uh, very knowledgeable and always had a funny comment to lighten the mood. To have it, you hold the rice like this. When you cut, please not cut too close your finger if you lose it. <laughs> Don't pull too strong if you cut your leg. Mm. And not pull like this if you cut your friend. <laughs> and about After the field experience it was time to clean up and look at the drier part of the rice harvest. Oh. Some parts though was not allowed for tourists to try out, for some reason. At the end of the day we got to try out some really fresh sugar cane. <laughs> and then we learned a little bit about how they make things out of bamboo. And I think I really got the hang of this. <clears throat> Another interesting half-day trip from Luang Prabang is to travel two hours upstream on the Mekong River to the Pak O Caves. These caves are famous for its thousands of Buddha statues. So for this trip I rented a boat with a driver for 60 US dollars. And I had a whole boat all to myself. The two hour boat ride is very relaxing. But I must admit that the scenery along this route is maybe not the most beautiful scenery you can find along the Mekong River.
on the route we made one stop to the whiskey village. This village is basically just a large market specializing in textiles and all kinds of alcoholic drinks. So if you like these kinds of things you can make a stop here. If you don't like it you can just continue to the caves. Shortly after the whiskey village you will arrive at the Paco caves. Where some stairs will take you up to the lower section of the cave system. This is where you will find most of the thousands of Buddha statues that have been placed here over several centuries. To get to the upper section of the cave system you have to walk up some stairs on the left side. Here you will find another cave that is actually quite dark. So you can borrow a flashlight at the entrance or like me bring your own. So this was actually an afternoon tour, where we left Luang Prabang around 1 o'clock and got back around 5.30. And the reason? Skip the crowds and get a glimpse of the beautiful sunset along the Mekong River on our way back. So if you have a few hours to spare while in Luang Prabang, there is an option to cross the Mekong River. Here you will find a large beautiful area that you can explore by bike or by foot. To cross the Mekong River, you can take the ferry that departs just down from the National Museum. The ferry is very cheap and it only takes a few minutes to get across to the other side. From here you can just follow the road along the river. And you will find many beautiful temples and several living quarters for the monks. I especially liked Wat Chompet, which was located on top of a hill. It had a great rustic look and the atmosphere was very nice. The location also gave it a great view over the Mekong River and over to Luang Prabang. This is also where I met my new friend who suddenly came rushing towards me with a big snake in his hand. Unfortunately though he didn't speak much English so I couldn't really tell if it was poisonous or not. I must admit I did watch my step a bit closer though after this little encounter. In this area they also have a Buddhist cave that you can visit for a small fee. If you are lucky enough to find the guy with the key. Do watch your step though because the cave is not very well prepared for receiving visitors. Eagle? Yeah, birds, eagle. Eagle's nest? Yeah. Big eagle or small? Um, there is another option if you have a few hours to spare in Luang Prabang, and that is to explore the other side of the Nam Khan River. For this trip you should borrow a bike, which I did for free from my hotel. If you live in the upper part of the historic city, the best way to cross the river is probably over the bamboo bridge. You do have to pay a small fee to get across here, but remember that these bridges are washed away by the floods, so they have to rebuild them every year. You should probably also be aware that you have to carry your bike up some stairs on the other side, if you choose this route. From this side you really get a good overview of the beautiful architecture in the historic district. Along this road I stopped at a couple of beautiful small temples. Not a lot of people around so I couldn't really go inside the temples. But I must admit I really like the quiet, tranquil atmosphere surrounding these places. Moving further along there are several handicraft stores. And the prices here are a bit lower than at the Ok Pop Tok Living Craft Center. I also stopped at this place, 
which had a great selection of art on different kinds of paper. And a lot of the things here they actually make themselves. And the owner of the store was kind enough to show me how they make the paper. One one seed we put about two three bone. He also showed me how they make the sand paintings. So going back again, I decided to take a slightly different route. This time over the fixed bridge rather than the bamboo bridge. This route takes you along a slightly more busy road with a lot of motorbikes. And when you get to the bridge, you just have to try to balance on those four planks. It's not that difficult though, and I managed okay. And as with many things in Laos, sometimes you just have to relax, take it easy and have a laid back attitude. And you will certainly get there in the end. So before I leave you, I want to give you a quick review of the hotel I stayed in during my visit. The Mekong Riverview Hotel is perfectly located on the tip of the peninsula that is the historic district. From the front rooms you have a view over the river itself. The reception is located in one of the buildings. And the guys working here are really service minded and will help you with anything you need during your stay. The rooms are located in several buildings both in the front and in the back. I was lucky enough to have this front room. The room is very nice and is furnished with quite old style furniture. And it comes with a big safe and of course the tea and coffee and also complimentary water and soft drinks every day. One thing I really liked about this room was the terrace up front. This place was just perfect for those couple of hours between your daytime activities and your nighttime activities. And as mentioned before, you can also borrow bikes for free at the hotel. Lastly, the hotel has an amazing breakfast area overlooking the Mekong River. And I can assure you that sitting alone here while the gentle early morning sunshine bathes everything in a peaceful glow really creates a sense of tranquility and a profound peace of mind. <laughs> <laughs>